Hi, everyone. This is Miranda with the Valuable Voices podcast. I have Corey Ward with me today. I'm really excited for you guys to hear from him. He's an author of a book called Dear Sons, and you can find him at CoreyJWard.com. But let's dive in. Corey, thanks for being here. Yes, I love that picture. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah, it looks like your youngest is like eating or licking your other son's shoe. It's just so funny. <laughs> I get that question a lot when people see the picture, like, so what is he doing? I'm like, you'd have to ask him. I was just standing where my wife told me to. I have no idea why he's doing what he's doing. I love it because it's not the perfect shot. It, it just shows your your kid's personality. So, yes. well, take us back to maybe your childhood and how you grew up, because eventually I'd like to know why you wrote the book and who you wrote it for. But, you know, did you grow up in the church? You know, did you I know you talked about maybe not having a father. So I'd love to hear kind of your background. So I grew up, my first point of reference for a mother and father were my grandparents. Mm -hmm. um, they were seven day Adventists. Um, so I have some familiarity uh, with the church, but I wouldn't say I had a relationship with the Lord. It was like we went because our grandparents told us we had to go. Yeah. And so my first point of reference for a dad was my grandfather and my grandfather, my grandmother. Now, my grandfather grew up in a different time from the South, survived segregation, parts of Jim Crow and all of that. And so he comes from the school of the way I show that I love you is that you're fed, you're clothed and you have all your needs met. So as a boy, I never got the hugging embrace and the I love you from another male in the father role. And I think Later in my life, I will find out how detrimental that was um, to me. And so my grandmother was a praying woman. And so um, I always tell people I am a product of somebody else's prayer. And so I would remember being a little boy and watching her before we went to bed, she would want to be on her knees for like an hour, hour and a half. And now that I look back on it today, I'm convinced that she was praying for my now. Wow. Um, so I believe prayer is powerful. I believe prayer is an unlimited passport. And I think sometimes, especially as parents, we do not pray enough. So we fast forward, my grandmother gets sick. Mm -hmm. And so we have to go live with my aunt. Okay. Now my aunt um, is, has her own child. She's pregnant with another child. It's me, my brother, and my sister. She's a single woman having issues with the, the, the man in her life. And so she takes on this responsibility of taking on all of these children with her own personal trauma yeah. and damages, trying to keep us all together. And so a lot of times with her, me and her had a really uh, tense relationship and just finding out later what she was dealing with and it's just it wasn't personal it's just the context of the situation also she told would tell me later on you know Corey I knew I only had you for a limited amount of time and you were the most quasi responsible and I knew when you turn 18 you would have to go and I just wanted you to be as prepared as possible and she said now that I look back on it a lot of things I should have done differently but based on the way she was brought up she was like I got to make you tough. Yeah. I got to prepare for the world and this, that, and the other. Yeah. And so we fast forward some more. My mother comes into the picture. Now I have to backtrack because I didn't meet my mother till I was about five or six. Okay. Because when she had me, she had my brother previously because she was a teenage mom and she wanted to go to Texas with us to live with some guy. And my grandparents was like, well, you could go wherever you would like to go but you're not dragging our grandsons wow. somewhere we don't know. So before you take them, no, we will take them. Okay. And so uh, reunite with my mom and um, things are going pretty good, but she is a single mother and there were two to three different men that she dated who had no interest in us as children. Sure. So but she's she's feeling she's feeding her own loneliness, her own insecurities and things of that nature. And it's not that she doesn't care about us, but she's in need of something that she hasn't got. So right. she's trying to balance caring for my children 
and getting my own needs met. Yeah. And she had, I found out when I'm older, she has her own personal trauma and things that she's dealt with. Right. That that I didn't find out till when I was an adult and like, okay, mom, now all this makes yeah. sense. Wow. And so you have various men in and out, one of them being my father, who I didn't meet till I was 13. Okay. And he comes, he steps into the scene acting like you haven't been gone for 13 years. Sure. Um, he chose the streets and things over raising me. Yeah. And so when I meet him, I'm excited to meet him. But because of his own stuff and how he grew up, he's he's finding it hard to connect with this person he hasn't seen in 13 years. Right. And so our relationship is essentially whenever I get in trouble, oh, you want to be the disciplinary, but you don't know me. Right. Right. Wow. <laughs> and so we 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 fast forward some more, um, uh, go through high school. Um, I become an adult and I'm just kind of wandering. Mm -hmm. And I think one of those issues is one of the things that a father does is he gives direction. Yeah. And what I'm learning as a father with my sons is that you have to be as hands-on as possible and find that balance of being hands-on and letting them make their decision, right. but also still being with them because there's going to become a time when Joshua and David, which is the name of my sons, they're four and six, <laughs> uh, make decisions on their own, but I have to be there to clean it up. Mm -hmm. or to navigate them out of the situation that they created. Sure. Because that's the nature of growing up. I didn't have that. It was just kind of making a mistake and just figuring it out at, at, as you go. And I think that's the worst thing for um, children, but particularly of boys. They will need me more when they're 18 and beyond, yeah. probably more than they need me now. Yeah. And so fast forwarding to about the age of 27, I'm just got this whole, I'm just like, what is going on with my life? And I'm sitting in my apartment and I say, God, if, who, if you are who you say you are, I need your help. And so a friend of mine, Joe Gofo, who was mentioned in the book, um, he has always walked with the Lord since we were kids, since we were teenagers. Mm -hmm. So he was the first person I called when I made that decision. Mm -hmm. And he was getting ready to preach. So he told the congregation they had to wait. My friend's about to give his life to Christ. Wow. And so I had an uncle, excuse me, George, who had been walking with the Lord for a while. So I called him and said, hey, man, I'm just going to go to church with you. <laughs> and ever since then, since the age of 27 and I'm 40 now, I've been walking with the Lord. Wow. So I get, I, I meet my wife. Um, we get married, but there's still something missing. And I remember my pastor uh, telling me one day, because Dr. Jamal Glenn telling me he's very hands-on with the men in the church. And he preached a Father's Day series one time, and he saw that it bothered me. He could mm -hmm. see from the pulpit that it bothered me. Wow. And so one of the things that he did for me, he became a surrogate father. And he said that I know that's what you need from me. So that's what I'm going to be for you. Wow. And so just like a father son relationship, there were times of correction and this, that and the other. But the thing that he always did that my dad didn't do or nobody really in my life did whenever there was a correction, he always came back and got me and never let me wander too far. Mm -hmm. And he was like that. He said, that's what the role of fathers are. And right. so even outside of calling him pastor, I call him dad. Nice. Wow. And so you fast forward some more. And one of the key things he told me to heal from my father is when you have the opportunity, ask him about his childhood, because mm -hmm. if you ask him about his childhood, it will give you insight and revelation to why his why and why he operated in the way that he operated. In. So one day, the following Father's Day, I have been praying. I like I don't I don't want to be mad at him anymore. Yeah. And it was interesting, as I was getting dressed, I was in my closet and I just started crying. Mm. And I heard the Lord whisper, you're okay now. 
So it was interesting. It wasn't this huge hoopla. It was in my closet, <laughs> getting dressed for church on Father's Day, not having any children yet. And I think this was a year before my son was, before we got pregnant. Okay. And so he's like, you're okay. And so I talked to my dad and I asked him about his childhood and the household he grew up in. It wasn't conducive to him ending up being a responsible man. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people grow up in households like this. Like my mother was a drug addict, which is why the set, when I went, left my aunt to originally live with my mom, we ended up back with my aunt from the time I was a freshman till I was a senior in high school because she was fighting a drug addiction. Yeah. And so that gave me a lot of insight into who he was. And then I forgave him. Mm. And so um, around 2015, around Father's Day, I would write these uh, quotes about fatherhood mm. and put the hashtag Dear Sons. And so a friend of mine, I was doing that for a few years. And then like before the pandemic hit, my, a friend of mine was like, why do you keep giving that away for free when you should put it in a book <laughs> and then monetize it? Yeah. So in, I started writing the book in 2020 in January. Then the world shut down. Right. And my wife, my wife was like, I'm going to lock you in a room. You can't come out <laughs> until you do like five chapters a day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And so that was that. And then now we have this. That is beautiful. Thank you for sharing all that. It's really helpful to hear your story because again, we all have a past and our childhood is kind of the way we brought up, the way we parent, you know, that's where we learn, right? That's where we learn how to be a parent, what a father is, what a mother is. So thanks for sharing all that. And I can just, I got goosebumps as you were talking a few times. Um, I just imagine you're one of the best dads in the world. Like, you know, sometimes we are the same as our parents and sometimes we're the complete opposite, right? We're making up for that void or what we were missing. So um, tell me about being a dad now that you're a dad. Um, it's, it's a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of patience. Yeah. Um, as I write in the book, it's a lot of days coming back saying, I'm sorry. Sure. And daddy needs to be better. It's a lot of days of when you have to stick to a discipline because what kids don't understand when you discipline them, regardless of how it is, taking something they like or whatever it is, it hurts you. Yeah. And so sticking to that, I got to, I have to stick to this, not because I'm trying to take something from you because I'm trying to benefit, it's going to benefit you later. Right. And always keeping that in the forefront. Um, I think fatherhood is um, one of the most pos important positions on earth. And that's not to exclude motherhood because I think that is equally yeah. important. But I think it's just something about like, your, your dad is the strength mm -hmm. of a household in my opinion. Yeah. And like my wife is the nurturing and you need them both. Yeah. Like you have to have them both. Mm -hmm. And so I don't see why we get in this debate. Some people get in the debate of which is important. Right. From my position in the seat I sit in as actually being a father, yeah. it's the most important seat mm -hmm. to my wife, motherhood. And that's okay because right. you both need them and they're both equally important. Absolutely. That's why God made us, right? To have a marriage and a mom and a dad. Well, that is beautiful. Thank you for sending me a copy. I dove in and I love what I'm reading. I want to share it with people. So thank you so much. You guys can check them out, CoreyJWard.com, correct? Yes, and I'm on Amazon. And Amazon, okay. So check out his book, Dear Sons, beautiful family pictures on your website. I just love it. And what a gift, what a gift for your sons and so many out there that maybe are fatherless. So thank you so much for sharing. It's been a blessing just to hear your story and good luck. Yep, thank you so much for having me. All right, thanks everyone for listening. Have a great day.